we're coming for you. You're a dead man. My name's Harold Laird. At the time of my escape, I was 26 years old. I've been in prison since I was 16 years. I killed two people. They gave me a capital life sentence, 35 years flat in prison. This is the bottom. This is where all the violence is. This is where things get rough. When I pulled up onto the Styles unit, they put me in the cell block with a bunch of racist gang members. It's a bad situation. Hey! Hey, kid! What's your rank, kid? And I said, what are you talking about? Hey, man, I'm not in your gang. Yes, man. I'm not a racist. Well, you better move, kid, or you're a dead man. At that point, I knew SOS. it's SOS on you, dog. Stab on sight. My life expectancy could be very short. Inmate to the cell door. Give me your hands. I don't know when I'm going to be hit. I just know it's just a matter of time. Stand back from the door and face me. I knew what was going on instantly. It's fight for your life. Bring it up. Call the backup. Hostile weapons. Break it up. Break it up. Get on the ground. On the ground. Get him out of here. Get him. Get him out of here. Just stay where you are. Stay there. That's when I made my decision. Either I'm going to have to kill somebody, somebody's going to kill me, or I've got to get out of this situation. But it's not gonna be that easy. We're in prison, you know. It's made to keep us in. At Styles Maximum Security Prison, the security was very tight. Each inmate is in his own cell for 23 hours a day. Count time, Larry. With counts every 30 minutes. The rec areas are one inmate at a time. So it's very secure. The Styles unit had three towers, and you had one mobile patrol, two perimeter fences, no man's land. The threat of an inmate getting killed in an escape attempt, it's very real. The officers would shoot to kill. I mean, that is your duty. And I started to think escaping was going to be next to impossible. But then I noticed something. Guy's cell above me leaks water into my light. Then I had a flash of inspiration. There has to be a way to access the lights. I guess there must be an access tunnel or a light chase. 
so that the maintenance guy can get behind the cell. So I know that if I can get through the light in my cell, there's a chance that I can make it outside. I started looking at the, the light and noticed it was plexiglass. You could see like a grid pattern and anything plastic can be cut. It just how to cut it. They call me MacGyver because I have an innate ability to work on things and fix things and stuff like that. It just comes naturally. I take a piece of thread just to see how easy, you know, cloth would cut something. So I, I tested on a plastic cup and it cut right through it. I was like, yeah, this will work. There's silicone that goes around the edge of the light to seal it. So I take a little plastic dental flossers and I use the edge of it to pick it out. I get all the silicone out of the frame. I get the diffuser panel part of the plexiglass out. But there's a second piece made of real thick plastic. This is what I'm going to have to go through. So I take some thread out and I twist it up together in a thick string. And I tuck it behind it and I just keep working it around the top corner until I get it where it goes all the way behind the light. I take a strip of the sheet and I tie it together. I pull it back behind there and then I start cutting back and forth with it. I just start, you know, using friction. I can see this is working, so I'm giving it my full effort. But I am concerned about making noise. Security checks are done every 30 minutes on the runs. You always have it in your mind that they're trying to manipulate the system to where they can get out. When I see that shadow, I know they're coming to my door. Hey, man, what's up? If he comes in, game's up. So I school my face in a bland, just every day, here we go again expression. Felt that my heart was beating out of my chest, and then my mouth was bone dry. feel relief. Now, I just got to keep pushing through, pushing and pushing till I get it done. After several hours, I'm through. Oh no. Now I have bombs. 
what am I gonna do? I'm trying to escape, but then I realized that I got a very big problem. I needed to find a way to get through these bars. But with nothing to work with, I know it's going to be real hard. It's a mild steel bar cage, and I realized that there's got to be something harder that I can work with to get through these bars. There has to be stainless steel somewhere in the pipe chase. There has to be. I noticed that there's a, a fitting, just like a radiator hose clamp on a car. And if I break that in half, I could use it just like a saw blade. Getting it off is my problem. But I had a thought. I take a magazine and roll it up into a paper pole. Now I take several of these and stick them together like a fishing rod. At the very tip, I put a piece of thread through it and put a wet toilet paper ball on the end of there. And I start swinging it back and forth. And then I kind of toss it like you would if you were fly fishing and try to throw it behind the plate. It's real difficult. But I just keep going. Then I got lucky. Once I get it on the other side, I reach over and pull it back to me. It's like, man, if I lose this, the clamp is going to be next to impossible to get off. When I got it, I'm excited. I've taken my time and eased that piece of thread behind it. Once I got the string going around the pipe, I pull a whole sheet around behind it. Then I just pulled it right through the, the grating. And I'm thinking, like, that's just one more barrier I know I'm through. I took the clamp and straightened it out. Then I break it in half, long ways. Now I got a saw blade. So I start on the bars. Sawing was real hard. And I realized that it's taken way too long. Any minute now, the guards are going to walk by the cell. But the section doors have a electrical lock. Whenever they open it, you hear and click. I could actually hear that in my cell. So I know a guard's coming. I don't want to cut all the bars out because that took a while. So I needed to find a way 
to get the barricades off. I noticed there's four screws that actually held the framework to the wall. I needed to get those screws off. I realized the best option is for me to make a loop out of the bar to make a wrench with this bar. And I wrench packed in there and put it on it and it slipped right on. I was really, really excited. It was actually loosening up. Great. I take all four of the nuts off. Now I can get into the pipe chase. The bar cage, it's heavy, and I don't want to make any noise. So I ease it off, and then it bumps into the wall. And I'm scared of the guard accidentally walking up on my cell and seeing, hey, he's gone. But I'm feeling this freedom that I'm not used to. And I realized that's it. I can go, I can fit through there. It's going to be tight, but I can work with this. Then my worst fears come true. I knew I didn't have enough time to do it properly, but it might hold up. Cell search. Move off the bed, on the wall. So I'm standing there watching the guards as they're searching my cell. Why ain't you late working? When they start looking at my light, my heart starts beating really fast, really hard. And I'm like, okay, just let it hold, just let it hold. I was terrified about what would happen next. I've cut through the light in my cell. Now the guards are searching it. I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm, I'm suppressing it. I know I got to keep it under control. I can't let them see my nervousness. And I'm thinking, here it is, you know, Man, if they find this, you know, this is it. I know my work's hidden well, but I'm concerned that it might shift. And if it shifts, I'm busted. When he walks off, I feel relief. I feel feel a lot better. Now I had to start planning my escape. There's going to be a lot of barriers. First thing is the pipe chase. It's not going to be easy because of the limited confines. There's going to be a pipe chase door with a lock on it. 
that I'm going to have to go through. Once you go through the door, you're literally outside. There's going to be getting to the perimeter and then getting through two fences without being seen. There's going to be guard towers, and I know that there's going to be the perimeter guard that drives into the car. I'm also concerned about my leg. I have steel rods running from my knee to my ankle, so I'm not going to be able to outrun all these things that I know will be coming after me. But, man, I'll try. About an hour later, I go out to wreck. Next thing I know... You're a dead kid. You hear me? My neighbor's out there talking trash, and he says... You're dead. SOS, kid. It's coming. We're going to you up, dude. We're going to get you. All right? You hear me? He's talking about this attack is going to happen tomorrow. You know that? Stab on sight. We're coming for you. They're going to wait till after breakfast to do it. This is it. You know, my life is on the line right now. And at that point, I thought to myself, tonight, I'm gone. At this point, it really was do or die. So I get everything ready. I took a wool blanket and I made a sweatsuit, basically, with a hood and everything so that none of my skin is actually exposed except for my face. I needed to make something to cut through the fence. So I get these brackets from the pipe chase and make some cutters. Then I make a dummy. I just made like a little paper ball just started putting hair on it till it stuck. It looked like a person laying there, sleeping. The guards are going to be coming back any minute now. So I know that I'm going to have to be quick. Now I'm out of here. It's about 3.45 in the morning when I actually climb into the pipe chase. I'm nervous, um, a little shaky, because I know that this is it. I have to move forward. Can't look back. I'm concerned about getting caught. I'm concerned about all the things that can go wrong while I'm in the pipe chase. When I see the pipe chase door, I realize the lock stands between me and the outside world, but I'm not gonna let it stand between me. I'm, I'm gonna get through it somehow, some way. So I used this all blade to get the screws off. I took the lock apart and realized the lock will work like a door lock. You know, you, you won't need nothing to unlock it. I eased it open just enough to peek around the corner. I'm excited. I, I feel great. I, I feel freedom is right there within my grasp. 
All I got to do is get to the fence, you cut through it, and I'm free. Once I get to the very end of the building, I'm looking up at this razor wire and seeing layer upon layer of sharp points. Very intimidating. I could clearly see where the guard was in the picket. I was scared. I was worried. I mean, He's got to go. My life is in his hands. But it was too late to go back now. So I just run to the fence. Prison fence, I'm exhausted. But I knew I made it. I knew the guard didn't see me. My sense of relief was great. Time to test the cutters. I take my cutters and I go to cut. I'm keeping my peripheral vision open for light. climb the fence because of my leg, but I have no choice. The razor wire sprung up. As soon as it pokes, I realize don't jerk or it's going to rip. So I ease back off of it and just keep going. My hands got poke holes where it had poked in my skin. It hurt a little bit, but I guess my adrenaline was pumping so much that I just wasn't feeling very much pain. I stand up, start going through the process of getting over the last fence. Freedom is right there. I see the light coming. I'm totally exposed. I'm now having to do something I really don't want to do. Jump off. I know I'm free now. I know that I'm out. <laughs> in the hallways and was approached by this inmate. He informed me that there was an inmate that wasn't in the cell. Are you sure? And he told me the cell number. In there! Looked and didn't see no movement. Let's stop messing around! Open. When we entered the cell, 
we walk in cautiously. Dad. Once you do pull back the blanket and you see your little plastic dummy, you're not expecting this to be happening. Let's go! You're thinking the worst. We immediately go to what we call a lockdown situation. Now we contact our state police and local law enforcement. I arrived at Stiles. This was a new facility. At that time, it was state of the art. We were shocked that somebody could escape. I don't know that it had been done before. I'm going to ask you a few questions about this Laird fellow. We begin interviewing all the offenders, trying to get as much information as we can. How long did you know Harold Laird? Has Laird mentioned a girl anywhere? No. Any particular place? No. Does he have any friends? No. Family members? No. Is he communicating with any other inmates? No. He was a loner. Even. I'm very concerned that he's going to harm someone, or to rob someone in his desperate state. Because he had no support system, he's not going to go to the family for help. He is going to have to rob, kill, and steal to stay free. I'm trying to get as far away as fast as I can. Then I come up on this truck. When I saw keys hanging in the ignition and some clothes, I was feeling just extraordinary relief. Like, man, I can't get no more lucky. When I start driving, I feel, I feel great. I feel freedom. I feel this extraordinary relief because now I'm in a car. Now, I'm moving. Now, the dogs can't track me. Under the dazed first light, a massive manhunt took shape in an effort to find convicted capital murderer, Harold Lair. The tracking dogs are able to pick up a scent, and we were able to ascertain that this was the pathway that he had taken. Sir, if I could ask you a few questions. There's a trailer house here. Guy comes out. What's wrong? His truck is missing. By the way, I have a rifle in there with 122 rounds. Now, we go to a heightened degree of security because now the offender has a vehicle with a weapon in it and plenty of bullets. Yeah, I need the U.S. Marshals to put it on APB. And all points bulletin, APB is entered. Suspect is a Harold Martin Laird. All, all the pertinent information we get, we put that out nationwide. 26-year-old white male, 88 GMC 1500. Suspect is believed to have been 122 rounds of ammo and a knife. We're determined to find Laird as quickly as possible. I'm going down I-10. I know this road. I know it runs from Los Angeles all the way to Florida. That's a lot of road. That's a lot of places to hide. Then I see cones narrowing it down to one lane. And I'm thinking, what's going on? There's a cop. He's looking into the cars as they pass by. At that point, I thought to myself that I'm totally screwed.
could they have already got the police mobilized already? I don't know. I don't know how fast it works. trying to play cool like average everyday citizen. It was a feeling of total fear. I could feel myself sweating and I could feel my heart racing. I passed him and knew he didn't recognize me. Relief was so great, I slumped. I was like, wow, great. Now I know I'm free. They're not gonna catch me. At that point, it really starts to hit home that he's gone. I didn't know what shape he was in mentally or physically, he escaped during the, the late hours when he should have been sleeping. So when you go and you take the, the lack of sleep with the adrenaline of being out, it, it's a very, very dangerous mix. When I first get in Mississippi, I'm exhausted. I mean, literally, I'm, I'm at the edge of full-blown, just pass out exhaustion. I've been on the run now for over 24 hours. I haven't had no sleep, and I'm just beat. thing I could have done was set the cruise control. After that, I don't remember nothing. Doing like a hundred miles an hour and fell asleep at the wheel. The truck was stopped in the grass. I get out and I look back and I can see the tire tracks in the grass. And I realize that that's just phenomenal luck. I mean, I'm not hurt. Luck doesn't go that far. That's just pure miracle. I'm like, no, I got to find a place to go to sleep. I decided to pull over in a rest area. I drove the truck into the corner and I kicked my shoes off, lay down and go to sleep. wake up in a state of disorientation. You okay in there? I know something's wrong. Wake up again. So I just stop, collect myself. Things start slowly coming around. What are you doing here? And I see it's a cop standing there. You okay in there? I'm thinking... So you should be the problem officer? Oh, oh, Lord, not again. 
know, what what do I do now? Can you kindly step out of the vehicle, please. Okay. This is going to be difficult. I step out. I don't even have my shoes on. I told him that I'm going up to see my sister. She's uh, in a hospital. I'm just trying to get there. I drove too long. You have some identification? Do you? I show him an ID that I found in the truck. It looked sort of like me, but it was a Hispanic man. Juan Hernandez. That's me. So there's a considerable difference in skin tone. And I was like, well, maybe I'll play it off. Who knows? This ain't you. I, that was. A, yeah, it is. It was me when I worked out on the oil derricks in the Gulf. It's stupid now, but. Yeah, I Just hold it right there. Just stand by. Don't go anywhere. So he went and ran the ID. Dispatch, this is Constable Jordan. My first thoughts are, am I getting away with this again? Am I, have I been able to talk my way through this? And a based on a Texas ID. First name, Juan, last name Hernandez, out of Texas. He's taken too long. He's taking way too long. And I'm thinking, if I've got to run, I can outrun this fat old man. It's my best shot to get away. Two young guys in good physical condition jump out. Turn around, sir. You are under arrest. I can't outrun them. The truck come back stolen, and it's just I'm busted. I know it. They take me to jail. They're gonna fingerprint me. I'm gonna come back as an escaped fugitive from Texas. My run's over. I'm very relieved when I hear that he's been caught. All right, Sheriff, I'm on my way, all right? See you then. At the end of the day, Laird was very good at getting out of his cell, but he had no plan. He had no ability to stay out. escape was worth getting me out of a bad situation but it wasn't worth all the hassle that's come with it passing through to styles prison in texas please it wasn't worth it